If you're doing cardio for fat loss, it's not going to work if you make the following three mistakes that everybody makes. What do you guys think they are? <laughs> uh, mm. Turn it into a, a mode of burning calories, right? Yeah. So you approach it with, uh, let's see how many calories I can burn in the next 30 hour, however long you do it for. I think that approach is a is a losing battle. Well, yeah, I think that that speaks to the first uh, one that I listed, which is where cardio becomes the cornerstone of your exercise routine. Like right. it is the, the main priority. form of exercise. Cardio is a terrible way to burn body fat uh, as the main form of exercise because it doesn't preserve muscle and uh, it it asks for endurance and stamina, which is okay if that's what you want. But through that process, and because it doesn't uh, send a muscle building signal, the body adapts very quickly by paring muscle down. So when cardio is the cornerstone of your routine, what you see, and you see this in studies as well, is number one, it doesn't lead to fat loss very effectively. But two, if it is combined with a low calorie diet, you'll see weight loss, but a significant portion of that weight will, will come from muscle. And so people end up losing weight. They end up uh, losing muscle along with the process, uh, typically about 30, 40% of the weight. Yeah. And then they plateau real hard. And then they're like, where do I go from here with a slower metabolism? And all of that, it's exacerbated when you do this in a calorie deficit, yeah, well, which is you, what happens to most people. You, yeah. Well, first off, you know, that, that's on its own. Those points yeah. stand true. What yeah, you just said. Totally. In fact, um, there's no more building signal at all. Nothing. Really. In fact, the studies show that if cardio, if you don't combine it with a calorie deficit, uh, it, you just won't lose anyway. Yeah. It's, a, it's a terrible way to burn body fat by itself. Most forms of exercise aren't great if you don't combine it with a diet. But then you're like, oh, cool, I'll combine it with diet. I'll, I'll cut my calories. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to lose muscle. And the reason why this happens, again, is cardio does not ask upon your body or demand upon your body to build muscle and strength. No. And because it does, in the short term, burn a lot of calories uh, while you're doing it, the body then tries to adapt to that caloric burn by paring muscle down, giving you more endurance, which you don't need a lot of muscle for that. You need very little muscle for endurance. Uh, you need muscle for strength, but not for endurance. So you'll lose muscle then your body learns to burn less calories and your initial 10 pound weight loss, then you plateau and then you're totally stuck and you're now you're stuck with a slower metabolism. So it cannot be, if the goal is fat loss, it yeah. cannot be the cornerstone of your routine. The cornerstone of your routine should be strength training. If fat loss is it should be goal. low. Yeah. Really low, not even moderate, really like a uh, long-term activity throughout the day is what you track. But I think too, a lot of people do cardio for too long a periods. Like, so yeah. if doing a, a short, punchy, like maybe crank the intensity up just a bit and keep it more anaerobic than aerobic, you're going to have a lot better chance of like maintaining a bit of muscle. Yeah. I, it's I've funny, always, so. I've always given the advice of just get a good mile time. Yeah. One mile. Like uh, the, sufficient, the effort, the effort that it takes to run one mile, most people with some dedication and focus, meaning like literally 30 days of approaching this or less can have a mile time down to eight minutes mm -hmm. or less. And if you can run a mile in eight minutes or less, you, you have, you're you doing all right. You've got some pretty good cardiovascular endurance, heart health. You're going to be like, that's good. And that's going to have enough stamina to translate to 99.9% .9 of all your normal activities. The real world. Yeah, real world. Yeah. So it's like, that that and that and that's a good healthy goal because I know when we talk about this we always get this pushback. This is you know something from here will get clipped out and some other you know want to be fitness professional will talk shit that you know all oh, these guys are advising for you not to do cardio. How stupid is that? And it's just like listen for overall health. Um, you know exercising the heart, which is what cardio does, is a good idea and it's okay. The problem is. It's not, that's not when someone who is 40 pounds overweight and they, and they get on the elliptical, they're not thinking like, Hey, I'm doing this so I can just be in better cardiovascular shape. They're like, I'm doing this because I'm get, I need to get I need this to lose 40, weight. I need to lose 40 pounds. Yeah. And that is where the, pro the problem I have yep. is that is not a good strategy. That's a losing strategy. And even if they find, if they muscle their way and grit their way, uh, you know, white knuckling it to get there through that method it will come back yeah, and it'll rear its head and be worse and harder the next time. They're stuck with the slower metabolism That's right. in an unsustainable place. So in that context, it's a horrible idea. It's not me saying that cardio is, 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 is bad for health. I think that's, that would be a stupid statement. Well, I mean, if, if you're, if you're looking for endurance, it's the best form of exercise, right? You want cardiovascular endurance? Well, you definitely need to do cardio for that. 
Um, and by the way, this brings us to the next one. You said, you know, run a mile. Like, here's another huge mistake people make with cardio, more so with cardio than other forms of exercise. All this is a common mistake people make with all forms of exercise. And that is that they don't consider the skill of the movement th itself, yeah. right? So when people decide to pick up running, for example, they're like, okay, I'm going to go start running because I need to get in better shape and I want to lose weight. They just lace up their running shoes and then they go and run until they're exhausted. And they're like, this is what I'm going to do. Not considering that the, the, the act of running is a skill. And if the skill, if your skill is poor, which it is, if you stop running in high school and now you're in your thirties or forties and decide you want to start running for workouts, your, your skill's going to suck at running. You're just not good at it. And if you go do it to fatigue, you're going to have terrible biomechanics. You will, it will result in chronic pain and injury. It will. In fact, if you look at the data on pain and injury, running is the top. It's one of the top forms of exercise that causes injury. Now it's not because humans aren't supposed to run. In fact, to be quite honest, it's one of the physical activities humans actually evolved to do. Uh, a, a fit human can actually outdistance run almost any animal. So we're actually evolved or designed to run. But the problem is we lose the skill because we don't do it. Then we try to pick up, pick it up, and we don't practice it like we're learning the skill. We just go do it till we're tired. And this is why people injure themselves and they can't do it anymore. So that's why their knees hurt, their ankles hurt, their hips hurt, and their backs hurt. So great it. that this is your second point. So, um, we're coming up on the final two weeks of this series that I've been doing on YouTube. And so I have introduced uh, like list cardio, like low and in, low intensity, steady state walking, right. basically uh, speed three to three and a half on a slight incline, like really, really easy uh, walking. Um, I had to move off the treadmill uh, at about 20 minutes in and in the elliptical for the exact reason you were talking about, because of my hamstring injury, mm. I can tell I started to notice as my body started to fatigue, my gait, gait was off. Yeah. My gait was off. Yeah. And I could feel Talk just, about why that's a bad thing, by the way. Well, because I know it's going to set up me for chronic pain in my low back and my hips because I can tell I could like it was this it was very obvious that the left side, it was like it, my toes were getting a little bit numb. I could just I could feel that there it wasn't the my weight wasn't even even though I'm thinking about it yeah. and I and I think I'm walking good, I could feel the fatigue sets in and that's yeah, it. Fatigue started yeah. to come in a little bit, and now I, I feel the discrepancy. The moment I felt that, I got off and I went and got on the elliptical, where I'm my I'm in a stationary position. I can control with my arms now, so that was exactly why I did that. And I just think, man, how many people just power right through that, and they don't realize that now they start to create this new pattern. They've now repatterned the way their body walks because of this little. That's what they trained. Yeah, because of this hamstring injury. And then it, the more of that cardio, the more times they do that, the more they solidify that. And then even when the hamstring heals and they're better and they, they, they're back to quote unquote normal, they now walk the, with this imbalance mm -hmm. that eventually ends up leaving, uh, leading you to overcompensating. And many times, and then the many times people can't connect the dots because this is how it shows up. It was a left hamstring injury, but all of a sudden my, my mid right, side of my back bothers me yeah. or my my neck on this side and so not realizing the, it's all connected so, yeah so people don't so people don't think that, that it doesn't dawn on them that that is because of the the hamstring injury and you decided that you're going to go for all these long walks or runs with you recovering from that not realizing how important your gait is and that you've now now created these bad poor recruitment patterns and now your body's compensating and the way the pain works is it kind of zigzags and ping pongs up the kinetic chain and so because your neck on the left side is hurting you you have like don't put that together at all that has anything You're to like do with like I have a bad neck not I have a hamstring That's issue. right you yeah. know what I'm saying and then you think of it as oh I must have been yeah. slept on it wrong or something else it's like no what's happened is because of this injury, you and 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 not taking, mm -hmm. you know, running like a skill, like any other skill, seriously, and you've now created these these poor patterns that now are you know uh, manifesting as chronic pain somewhere else. And, and hey, look, uh, this is true for all forms of exercise. People tend to look at exercise as a means to an end, like just get me tired, just got to move. So it's true for all forms of exercise. Uh, thankfully, with strength training, people tend to consider form more often. I'm not saying it's great, but they tend to consider like, oh, there's a technique to the squat and the press and the whatever. Still needs to be communicated more uh, more often. But when it comes to cardio, especially running, nobody considers it. They just go run till they're tired. They don't consider that there's a skill 
that goes to running and that if your skill is off, the repetitive motion of it, you're going to cause problems. You will cause problems. Uh, not that you're, it's a potential. It's going to happen oh, yeah. if your skill of running is terrible. Uh, lastly, this is back to the diet part. You're eating too little with your cardio. Like you, you cut your calories really low and do a lot of cardio. This is a guaranteed way to lose muscle. You are going to lose muscle. Now it's not because your body's burning muscle. I know people used to say that in the past, like, oh, you're burning your muscle off. That's not what's happening. Your body's not reaching for muscle for energy to burn. It's just paring it down, making you better at what you're asking it to do. Now, what are you asking it to do? I need endurance. I need to be efficient with this movement. Um, and, uh, and that's it. So, all right, how do we become efficient? We, we pair muscle down. How do we become, how do we gain endurance? Well, we don't need much muscle. So let's become a skinnier, less muscled version, more endurance version of myself. So now doing the same activity, I burn less calories. I'm more efficient at it. I got more stamina. I've got less muscle. Here we go. So again, if you look at it and this, the data proves this and shows this clearly, uh, and kind of defends what we saw for decades as trainers and coaches in the gyms. We used to see this all the time. I'd see people come in, they jump on cardio, refuse to do strength training, and you would see them get skinnier, but you'd see that the muscle loss was happening. And then they'd be stuck at like 20, 30 pounds overweight. And they'd come in every single day, hop on some cardio machine and just, and then they'd tell me, I don't know why I'm not losing any more weight. What's going on? I, in fact, I had a couple people one time, I had a, a couple members. I thought they weren't telling me the truth about their diets. They had like booklets of writing out their food. And I remember looking at them going, oh, you're eating 1300 calories a day. You're in here five days a week doing 45 minutes of cardio and you're not losing any more weight. Like what is going on? Oh, their body just learned how to burn less calories. How, how do you explain this? When we, when the body begins to metabolize fat as its primary source of fuel, because it's now been depleted of glycogen, how do you explain to somebody how you do that to where it just taps in and utilizes fat and it doesn't pare down muscle versus it it actually not deciding? So, for example, and this is kind of how I explain it, and um, obviously, I mean, uh, probably not the best. Uh, so I'd like to hear how you would say this. So right now I'm in this caloric deficit. Uh, and it, that doesn't mean that I'm in a caloric deficit 24-7 because I go fuel up, right? right? I go eat a... 600 calorie meal it takes about an hour to two hours for that to get digested and then get to be converted over into glucose then stored as glycogen and that now now is providing my body fuel mm -hmm. to move around to do exercise and that but then those 700 calories goes just like a gas a tank i use and then it runs out and then when it runs out my body then goes oh let's kick over and find another system to run off of Fat seems to be like a good source. He's got a bunch of that stored on him. Let's tap into that and start using that. Now, what I know is that if I'm in that place where I'm depleted and I'm just kind of, and let's say, I'm, this is me burning sitting here in the chair right now with you, right? Because I've already used mm -hmm, those calories. Mm -hmm. My body's just metabolizing fat slowly, very, very slowly, but it's metabolizing fat to, to, to get here. But then I go over and decide, oh, I want to ramp that up. I want more. So I get on the treadmill. I start running like crazy. What is happening that tells my body that that slow, I get, is it because the fat is converting at such a slow rate that it goes, Oh, this is not enough fuel. And so that's what causes the pairing down. And that it, it like, no, or is it an adaptation later on that the body goes, Oh, he keeps running every day. We, we don't need muscle. Two separate, adapt two separate things are happening. One is it needs a source of energy, but the other is just adaptation to the stress. That's all. So, if the stress on your body is saying endurance and you combine that simultaneously with, uh, especially, uh, with excessive calorie, calorie burn yeah. and you don't have a signal that says we need muscle, your body's always going to try and meet your caloric intake with its caloric output. That's, that's the goal, right? Cause it, it would die. Otherwise you can't always be at a deficit. You would die. If you were always at a deficit, eventually your body would run out of energy. It would consume itself and you would die. So the body learns how to burn less calories. It's always what it's doing when you're in a deficit. Always, 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 even if you do it perfectly, your body will start to adapt. It's called metabolic adaptation. And again, one way it does, and there's a lot, by the way, it's very complex. It's extremely complex. Like you can speed up or slow down your metabolism with the same lean body mass, by the way. You don't even have to gain or lose muscle. Your body can, can, can learn through heat production and through lots of other metabolic pathways. So more complex than people even understand, even the top 
scientists understand, it can slow down or speed up your metabolism. But one of the ways it does it is just just to reduce muscle mass. And just to, it's like it would be like taking your eight cylinder engine and making it a four cylinder because you want to burn less gas. So that's what your body does. So it's just a different adaptation. So I guess I guess in fact you could lose muscle and be in a calorie surplus. You could be in a calorie surplus, do so much cardio, so much well, endurance. Of course, work. if you're in a calorie surplus, you don't feed the body the proper amount of protein and you're overstressed chronically. Your body will get rid of muscle because it's a stress adaptation. And it's too expensive. Right. So losing muscle doesn't just happen from a calorie deficit, although it usually does. It could also happen in a calorie surplus if your body is adapting in a, in a direction to adapt to stress in a way where it's trying to reduce its caloric output or or improve its ability to store energy. It's again, again, it's a complex process, know, but it's an adaptation like, I, I process. Think, I feel like I like the way, whether it's scientifically correct or not, I like the no, way. No, I think I, you're selling it well. I, I, that's, yeah. I mean, to me, that's how I always, because here's what I, what I understand. I, I know for a fact of how many times I've done it, not only to myself, but to so many people. Yeah. Like, it's like uh, there's this beautiful sweet spot. If you can get a client and yourself to be in this caloric deficit and actually just moderately move and cruise. Yeah. And it's and it feels like almost like the body is just metabolizing fat as a primary source. And the moment I decide to get crazy and want more and push harder, the body kind of goes, whoa, yeah. you know, like it, this, it's real convenient for me to metabolize fat and convert it over. It's nice and slow. You got plenty of it stored on you. This is fine. But then the minute you start doing something hard and aggressive, the body goes, oh, this is this is more than we can handle right now. And so what do we need to do? Oh, so you pare down some muscle. You know, we used to say, oh, you burn the muscle. But we know that's yeah. not true. We yeah. know that you're not metabolizing and burning the muscle as fuel. Do you guys, do you guys remember when those, those um, this was years ago. This was a big deal though. Remember when those scans came out of obese individuals and mm -hmm. it just completely destroyed the myth that they carried more muscle mass and bone mass. Yeah. Right. You and, thought logically just because they're carrying this extra weight, it would produce muscle. No. Which was not the case. No. Sarcopenia Surprising. is actually more common uh, yeah. when they were obese. Uh, so you have to send that muscle building signal. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps. Just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now if you want it. Click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Anyway, I gotta I gotta bring this up because I think this is so crazy. Uh, we're supposed to mention our sponsor, Eight Sleep. They're doing a thirty day trial for it's their. It's not crazy. It's brilliant. The fact that they like like, like you, really you get smart. Eight Sleep, you try it for you need thirty to days. Feel it. That's really the whole thing. If it doesn't blow your mind with your sleep, this return does, it. This doesn't That's work. It. This doesn't work with all companies and all brands, but. With some, and I've talked about this forever because of how much I'm a fan of eight sleep. It's like, it's one of those things that if you're somebody who knows that you're sensitive to the temperature in your room, like the way you sleep, and that you have this ability to control it, and then AI improves upon it on base, it like monitors your sleep and changes like it in thirty days, on the fly. in less than thirty days, in days you will feel a difference from it and see and notice. Like and if you don't, you return it. That's right. And so yeah. you know, so brilliant. Um, for them to do something like this. You have this. to be really confident in your product to do something yes. like that. Yes. Yes. It makes a massive difference. Yeah. They have to go through that experience. Otherwise, it's just talk, you know, like to, to, to really feel the difference of it's everything. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, I got to tell you guys this. I went down a rabbit hole this morning. I took notes. This is how excited I was to bring this up. <laughs> I almost never do that because I typically remember, but I'm like, I got to write this down because I went down this rabbit hole of the, the, ultra processed food industry Ooh. which okay we've talked about what sparked this because this, i always get sparked by something that leads me down these rabbit holes there was this gentleman who was talking about the history of it mm -hmm. and i'm like cross-checking and referencing and then i went down this rabbit hole it's crazy so we've talked about this before right like how ultra processed foods if we had to pin the obesity epidemic on anything, which is a complex problem. Yeah, there's but a lot of factors. There's a lot of factors, but if there's one factor that contributes the most, right? It's ultra processed foods and just how they've been engineered to make us overeat. And, and good luck trying to, to control your calories and eat them. They're just brilliant engineering. They make people overeat. And you can see clearly, you look at the obesity epidemic, it directly lines up with the, the uh, you know, the, uh, how much uh, ultra processed foods have become a part of our diet. So I went down this rabbit hole, dude. This is going to trip you out. So mm -hmm. it starts all the way back to 1909. So in 1909, Rockefeller, who was extremely powerful, richest man, uh, you know, I think might it be even the richest man ever. In if you even look if, at the yeah, inflation, yeah, if yeah. you look at inflation, all that, right? 
His lawyer wrote something up called the Flexner Report, which we still use to this day. Flexner? Flexner. F-L-E-X-N-E-R okay. report. Never heard of it. And what this did is it revolutionized medicine. So leading up to this point, up, up until 1909, we actually had a holistic view of the body, like how systems connect, you know, communicate or whatever. The Flexner report literally says in there that holistic nutrition or medicine is pseudoscience. Get rid of it. What? Isolate each system of the body and then treat it. So look at each system and then figure out how to treat it. Now, why would he do this? Well, Rockefeller is the father of the modern pharmaceutical industry. Remember, he, he had oil more than anybody. And most pharmaceuticals, come from petroleum, mm -hmm. come from oil. Yeah. Uh, most drugs are created from that from that process right there. So he is the father of the pharmaceutical industry. He His lawyer writes up the flexion report. And through that, they basically started the path of, this is how we treat people. He was the first person to fund the John Hopkins University mm -hmm. and education. So the medical system, Western medicine, started in 1909. Built off of that. Yeah. How we educate our doctors was hmm. systems of the body or individual holistic medicine. And by the way, still used to this day. Till this day, it still directs how everything is uh, used. And, and again, it's a uh, medicine, pharmaceuticals were a byproduct of the oil industry and modern medical education came from this and still used uh, to this day. So why does it serve him to separate the body? Because when you do it that way, now you're treating yeah, just yeah. individual systems and diseases. So now I can. So now I can. So uh, you're looking at a disease you, you by itself, target it with a drug. Well, right? yeah, and it also yeah. means that I can sell you ten different things for ten, five all kinds of yeah, 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 yeah. more options. Yeah, this is way. for this is for this yeah, system. Right. Oh shit, that's fucking up this system. One, Here's man. one for that system. Now I'm not saying, by the way, I'm not going to. I don't. I'm not saying Rockefeller was evil because you know, me remember medicine was wild west back then. Yeah. So the intentions might have been like good, like right. okay. Here's what we need to do, but it had such a strong influence that this, believe it or not, ties to the the pharmaceutical industry and it ties to well, that's uh, like the Western medicine approach. It became like the difference in between that and our old, you know, the, the I guess the Eastern would you consider which more became holistic. really good for acute stuff. Uh, yeah, the uh, surgery, the especially we became yeah. masters at that, and that's what separated acute us from us. Like up you, until you came to us for a very specific thing. Hit the nail on the head. Right. Up until World War II. Most of the medical interventions that we that we attribute to Western medicine that are miraculous uh, happened right before or around that time, right? Uh, antibiotics, mm -hmm. treat, you know, surgeries. Like it actually it were incredible breakthroughs uh, from that that categorizing system. Okay, and up until about for a long time, up until the '60s or so, late '50s, '60s. All, all Western medicine was about acute issues. Chronic issues were not considered, like you didn't go to the doctor uh, for a chronic health issue. You went to the doctor for an acute issue and mm -hmm. they treated you. Yeah. And the pharmaceutical industry didn't even consider that somebody would be willing to take a pill for the rest of their life. It was like, you take this pill for 30 days and then you're done. The first the first drug to do that. Do you guys want to know what it was? That what that you take indefinitely? Where they where they tested this and then it, it's like the first drug ever, and then after that they're like, "This is a huge market." Birth uh, control. Oh, birth control. Oh, birth I was control was say the first blood one. pressure medication. No, or something. Birth, okay. no, everything after that was birth control. And wow. what year was birth control introduced? In that late fifties, early sixties. Wow. So they showed people will take a pill. They'll take something forever if we can show that whatever sells some particular. Up until value. that point, we had mm. no. Think, no, nothing that subscribed. No, and it opened for... up a whole new market. And then wow. we had Valium came out. You know, right around that time, Valium comes out. Up uh, at that point, I believe in the sixties, uh, thirty percent of women were taking Valium. Holy uh, shit! Because they were like, "Oh, just take just this every day." Just hopped up on opiates all day long. Yeah, wow. just take this. Well, it's a, it's a benzo, I think. But just take this every oh, day. Oh, is that an opiate? No, Valium isn't. Oh, I thought it was an opiate. No, no. It does. It, does it still pair with the opiate receptor though? I don't think so. I think it's a benzo type. Maybe look that up, Doug. But. I know that Valium, 30% uh, of women were on I it. thought it fell in the same category as hydrocodone and all the rest of those. No, oh, interesting. No, no, no. I didn't know that. Yeah. So so that was, and, and then they started to look at chronic health issues, mm -hmm. heart disease, diabetes, you know, anxiety, wow. depression, and it went down. So that that's that path right there. Like, okay, chronic health issues, we have now drugs. You just take them for the rest of your life. 
to treat these issues. Valium is a yeah, it's, it's a diazo- it's not an, uh, diazepam. Yeah, interesting. Classic so drug does that mean benzos. so? So Sal, what does that mean as far as like what receptor attaches to? Uh, that's a good question. I and don't... does that mean that it's less addictive? No, because it's supposed to be really addictive. Very too. addictive. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. No, benzos are very addictive. And if you just if you go off of them after using them for a while, you get some crazy rebound anxiety and, and terrible side effects. Hmm. Um, are you looking at receptors there, Doug? Yeah. Oh, the GABA receptor. Duh. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So so uh, that's where we're at. Okay. Then you get to the 1980s, and in the 1980s, the Surgeon General releases a report admitting that tobacco is bad for you. Remember, up until then, there was this huge war between the tobacco industry and some scientists. In fact, if you go back you know, 50s, there were ads talking about the health. <laughs> yeah, there's ads of pregnant women smoking <laughs> cigarettes. Too. There were ad- hey, do you know that there are doctors ads? are smoking cigarettes as they're doing surgery? Do you know that there were ads that showed that um, smoking was good for a cough? <laughs> <laughs> there were ads. Hey, That's amazing. Uh, Camel had an ad and it said like three out of four doctors uh, recommend Camel cigarettes. Over, oh, yeah, yeah. I, remember oh, it's I, remember, I remember those. Wow. So anyway, in the 1980s, Surgeon General Report comes out and says... Um, cigarettes are bad for you. So the tobacco industry was like, oh shit, what are we going to do? You know what they did? Hmm. The largest uh, business purchases up until then happened right around then. It was, it, by the way, these tobacco companies were the largest companies in the world. They were the Google and the Facebook of the time. Back then in the eight, early 80s, mm-hmm. if you looked at the most profitable companies, it was these tobacco companies. They were, they were, that's how powerful they were. Would they move into energy? Where did they move their they money? They bought food companies. Food companies, yeah. They went into like, you know, these these massive. Well, you've said this companies. before. I've heard you say this that a lot of the the people that got fired from the like the smoking industry just moved right over to the food. The scientists, that's, all the scientists that you, were doing. The, all these tobacco industries bought these food companies brought their scientists over and they took their brilliant, how do we make things addictive yeah. and applied it to food. And <laughs> that is when food got crazy. Yeah. That's when they really tapped into how do we make food so irresistible be interesting that, to know that who, people can't stop How do eating. they consume the whole thing? Be interested to know so who, the, who the big names, the big P actual people that were that bought the companies. Like who who was it? Like Doug, look at tobacco like, companies buy food companies, nineteen eighties, and let's let's look at yeah, that. let's see who like the big hitters are. Oh, it was they were they bought like 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 huge purchases. Well, yeah, when you look at even the if you look at you we think that we have millions of choices when it comes to food. But there's like a handful of companies yeah. that like own four, all of those companies. Think, yeah. yeah, there's like major a major hand- companies. That own yeah, them. there's like there's a handful of companies that own all of those companies. Yeah, let's see what it says there, Doug. Yeah, we got Kraft, General Foods, Nabisco, yep. all, all bought by tobacco companies in the 1980s. Wow. And they were back then. They were such. Uh, let's see, Philip Morris and R.G. Reynolds uh, bought them all up, and they controlled a large portion of America's food supply. And remember, they took they took these scientists so does, does, that worked for them that knew how to make cigarettes, the new addictive properties right, right. understood it. Applied it to that. To food. So is it is it actually like Philip Morris, like a holding company, actually bought all these food companies? Or is there a man behind Philip Morris that went out and bought these person that benefited for it? Or did the actual company go and buy it? I think the companies bought them. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. And they, so, it was big news because, again, this was like, at the, 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 I remember the, per, I know the purchasing prices, the, the, the sales price were so big, it made big news. Mm-hmm. It's like, it would be like Google buying Apple. Yeah, or something like that. Right, 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 right. So then they took these scientists and then they said, hey, let's let's have some fun with these foods. And they did. And and again, the data on this is so clear. And I love- I wonder if it's- if and it, I, it, They're so powerful and they have so much money and they have so much pull with media, especially legacy media. They'll put out these bullshit articles talking about, oh, it's just calories, completely ignoring what's really important, which is you can't- Stop overeating this. Forget that what's in the food. Look, it's got fiber in it. Look, it's got nutrients. Look, it's got, it's, it's just the calories. It is making you overeat. If you eat these foods, you're going to be overeating. I period. Mean, th- end of story. This is, I mean, this is the, uh, this is the big thing that we have disagreement with some even our really good friends, right? We have quite a few very intelligent, um, you know, science friends that defend the you know these processed foods i don't think so not anymore not anymore sure no 10 years ago maybe even lane like you'll, you'll even hear lane norton be like no nah, they make you overeat like he, now the argument they would make was well it's, you just don't overeat your calories and you're fine 
well, you don't know shit. Yeah. But it's like saying to somebody, here, just do a little bit of cocaine. Yeah, but don't get don't addicted. Don't do any more, yeah, but it's sitting around you. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're going to overeat. And the study, but, and the reason why they don't say it anymore is now we have incredible studies that just show how powerful these foods are. They're so powerful that our bodies naturally tell us when to stop eating, by the way, everybody. Yep. Like, your body tells you when to stop eating. But when you're consuming a food that's been designed to make you overeat, to hijack that, that signal doesn't happen until you're you've already overeaten. Yeah. Once you've like really overeaten, then it says, okay. By the way, as you continue to eat these foods, because of the way that they're designed, that overeating signal gets pushed down the line. So if you eat them now, you overeat. But if you eat them all the time over years and years and years, you build like any drug. You build a tolerance That's and right. it makes it worse and worse and worse and worse. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, are you struggling to see results with your butt workouts? Are your glutes not responding? We have a secret to a great butt guide. Now, this gives you strategies, exercises, nutrition tips on how you can develop a great backside. You can download it for free right now by clicking on the link below in the description. Well, wasn't, I mean, back in the day with like a lot of our science friends, um, I'm sure there wasn't a lot of studies in terms of like the counter of a lot of these companies like products, like, like they're not motivated to pay an exorbitant amount of money to study these, to see that it's making people overeat. There was probably interest way later. Once there's all these chronic issues we see, uh, you know, in, in culture and trying to like dive in and find well, that out. But it's like, it's only been recently we've seen some you, of these, excuse me. If you're making these foods, your incentive is not, uh oh, they're eating overeating. Mm. That's a good sign. Yeah. Right. If I make a food yeah. and I'm trying to make money, and that's, by the way, that's what companies are supposed to do. Okay. And it's a, it's a quote unquote voluntary thing. So you buy it because you choose it. Like if I'm making a food and, oh my God, my consumer's eating the shit out of this, good yeah. job. Yeah. It going. means you got a home run. Yeah. I mean, well, it's I mean, just the, a good product. The, and the thing about this is that, I mean, this is part of living in a free country, though, right? And this is what, what happens in free markets is, Every like let, let's look at a different industry, the video game industry. Yeah, I mean uh, Just the novels, your phone. the movie, your phone. The, the movies, the yeah. streaming. I the mean, technology is the same. They're, they're they're all they're all incentivized to keep you addicted That's to right, whatever yes. whatever that is. And the, the the better they are at it, the better it is for their business. And so it's it is so much up to us as the consumer to be more aware of all of those things. Yes, and here's the myth. The myth is I can use all these things, I can consume all these things, and I can control my intake yeah. and I can tr control my I can my still access. be in balance. Yeah. That's the myth. The truth is you become aware, but your awareness has to be at this point. Oh, if I engage in this, it, I'm going to overeat. Or if I engage in all this tech, I will overconsume it. Or if right. I engage in what, So that's the awareness. The awareness is to not engage because you're out of control with it. Yeah. And that's just a fact. Yeah. So- but it's crazy when I went down that rabbit hole of like, it started with the, you know, with medicine and moved its way into food. And mm -hmm. and, and now we're like, we've, we've created these, these uh, like chronic illnesses are, by the way, 90% of pharmaceutical drugs now treat chronic illnesses, meaning 90% of drugs are, are drugs designed to, keep you to take all the time. Yeah. Not just you take it sometimes and, and, and you're off of it. And that's a money maker right there. Like, I wonder if that's where like that's a crazy money. I wonder if, if like uh, you know ARR like reoccurring revenue came from from that. From, <laughs> that's a great question. I wonder if like every other business followed suit and went like, oh my god, like we could. This is how we should do everything. Yeah, look at this, yeah. <laughs> dude. Like, sets it up for the oh, long term oh, user. Oh, it's crazy. That's why these uh, the studies on psychedelic uh, use for therapy, um, the pharma industry is not really super interested because what the research is showing is you use it for six sessions and then you're fine. Like, how do we keep make money? On, how do we make money on this when people stop using it mm -hmm. after six sessions or whatever? I know it's so crazy. crazy stuff. I wonder how much overlap too there is because you talk about the the medicine led to cigarettes, cigarettes led to food. Is how much of the overlap is in the tech now? Oh. Like, I wonder how many people that were in that world. It's on steroids, bro. Yeah, because I think I think that I think the tech thing is that is the next biggest. If you talk about uh, pharma, cigarettes, yes. um, processed foods. Tech is that of our generation. Well, imagine that's, with food, that's exactly how what they, that is. How they figured this out with food is they, little by little, they tested it on people and they started to realize, oh, this is working, this is working. With tech, it's it's the feedback is so quick. 
Yeah. That they'll measure how long you hover over something, yeah, how they, often it gets All clicked, the analytics so. are insane and the data Instant. that they can just retrieve from all your just behaviors around it. Like they get it instantly. Your, the algorithm on your social media adjusts on the fly. Yeah. Whereas processed foods took a second. They made one cookie, then they got to wait to make another cookie to make it more or whatever. Imagine if you were eating a cookie and with every bite, it was adjusting itself to become more palatable. Yeah. That's tech. Did yeah. you see um, Instagram, I guess the CEO uh, said that there's a new feature that that allows you to actually like wash clean your algorithms and start over. No. Yeah. That's cool. Which is cool. I I was trying to figure, I couldn't even figure out how to do that on my settings, but like, it's just, I think they're realizing that, you know, this is going to be something that they're going to look into in terms of people's behaviors, how it's influencing them. And so this is almost like, well, here you can... You can adjust it if you want, or you can just keep doing what you're doing. Well, this is uh, this is like tobacco, putting the yeah. warning label. The warning label. It's that's, the warning label. That's, tech. What, yeah. that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Or like, because didn't they run? Didn't they run like counter ads on themselves too? Like, you, oh, kid, they paid. Kid. Yeah, didn't they pay for like yeah, some some ads of like like talking bad about yeah smoking and yeah, all yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, just what's, to like that's bring their, interest. You know what's funny about that? that. What, you, what you bring up is so interesting too, because because we're talking about the bad guys, right? Like. Imagine if a food company gave you the option for a a less palatable version of their product. Most people would be like, "I don't want that." Of course, not. why yeah. would I? I want this one over here. Yeah, you know. So you give consumers the option. I hate to say it, but most and of us they choose. don't choose it, and then it's like, well, we tried. Yeah. I mean, it's the most challenging thing for even health products, right? Is like, how do you make something healthy, but also make it palatable so people want to actually eat it? You know, the well, truth that's, is the, that's the key. You want to make a protein bar that sells like crazy. You don't focus on uh, like how healthy it is. You make it tasty. That's how Quest hit a home run. Yeah, I know. Quest hit a home run because it was like the first protein bar in a long time that I had seen that was like, oh, wow, this tastes good. Like that was, they got everybody like that. You know? <laughs> yeah. so it had nothing to do with like how healthy and how <laughs> no. great it was. It was no. just like, no. you know, it's a glorified candy bar and they figured out a way to, you know, keep the calories minimally really? down and put 20 grams of protein in it. And it was a gangbuster. Dude, I tried. It was the first power bar that they ever came out oh, with. They were just oh, they were so gross. Oh, my God. God, they're like you, green. Remember, they're like a green, like yeah. a puke green. Yeah, it, was like, it was like if you, if you held it, like it would like lumpy, slowly pull it, it was, out. It was almost like eating yeah. leather. Yeah. But I remember they were passing them out at, at a three-on-three -three tournament basketball. And and so they're like, oh, this is new uh, protein uh, bar. And you guys want to try it? And we try it. And we're like, oh, gross. Yeah. It was awful. And like they were, it was this revolutionary thing. And yeah. then it just never got I would, much better. Doug, look up. Who owns Power Bar? Yeah, they, they were uh, the first, right? They were one of the first. They were, by the way, the protein there was so low. Like I think it was like yeah, there was grams. nothing. It was, it was like eight really. to twelve grams. Yeah. it was super low back then. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. it was like high. It was an like energy bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm just, I wonder who owns. When that. I real when I was a kid and I found out about protein, uh, it looks I would like eat Post. three or four of them. Oh, Post owns them now. Damn, wow. I bet. You see, and I bet you, Justin, when Post bought them. I bet you that's when they re-engineered it and made it, like, made it now tasty. They, yeah, they make yeah. it all tasty now. Because Power Bar have been around for a while. Oh, the original Power Bars, you can't buy those anymore? The, no. The weird I don't know. So I've, no, I've, no, I haven't seen evolved, any. They've evolved all of them. Oh, yeah. I, you guys, they make them now like normal protein. They make them like Quest now. Yeah, they make okay. like those type. And When did Power Bar start? Was that a 1980s product? Not 80s. No, it might later. It's like 89, Well, 90. maybe maybe I didn't see it Maybe it wasn't popular. Yeah, look up the 90s. But how about that? Post owns it. That's the thing that's got to be like scary for you too. Is that eighty six? Eighty six when it started, wow. and then when did Post runners buy it? Probably, yeah, runners. I think I did have it when I, I was bet Post like bought it in the last ten years, eighty eight or something around there. I was like was maybe fifteen because so I think like those bars been like that for yeah. a little bit now. <laughs> maybe twenty. I've got to figure out how old I am. Maybe twenty. I was young. Uh, let's see, twenty fourteen. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was just saying how when I thought oh Post Nestle owned it before then. Oh Nestle had bought it before then, huh? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to it's get, come a long way for sure. When I was 16, I started working out I in the gym. Why Nestle would buy that and then Post would buy it from them? Why would you sell that part of your business? Interesting move. I mean, obviously, they mm. thought it would be good. They wanted some market I share. Was, well, I, guess. See, I don't think I was 16. I was 15 and I was working out at the YMCA, the first gym I ever worked out at. Little tiny weight, weight area. I used to have to ride my bike to three miles to get there. And then I'd go in and they all, all they sold were power bars. Yeah. And this is my first foray into like supplements. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat these right yeah. here. I would have like three. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like three of them at a time, dude. Well, you would need and them. And they were so gross. Oh, yeah. I was <laughs> eating those and like drinking a gallon of milk thinking I was going to get jacked. The milk was the best thing <laughs> yeah, that you Yeah, the had, milk was dude. the only thing I had going for me. Dude. That's what I've always thought is funny is when you actually look at like the, the post, the, all the studies they have now too on like just a, a glass of chocolate milk yeah. comparing to like a shake and everything like that. It's like, it's you're pretty much the that's, same. same. That's the gym that I, that I worked out at up until I was 16. And that's the one I told you guys about that I left because I broke the, the, the mirror. Where I loaded the bar <laughs> yeah. with a bunch of small plates, and yeah. I was stripping them off, and then it just one side flipped yeah. out of my hand. Yeah. Are you still using your? Because uh, I know you ended up going and buying a ninja cream, didn't you? I did. Uh, you, do you still use it I a love lot? It. I with use, protein powder. I use it like crazy. My kids, I give it to my kids. Yeah, they, I make little protein powder ice uh, ice cream pops or ice cream with the ninja creamy. Yeah, and they just get psyched, dude. My little two year old screams when i tell her That's you want funny. you want ice cream ah <laughs> and she gets in her chair and she waits for me i mean go. it's 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 pretty wild right how you could be uh, you're, it just you, mixes air in it or something perfectly yeah, to make it, it give is. you the right texture yeah, yeah. it up yeah by the way that's that's just goes to show you uh palatability how complex it is it's it, it's uh texture plays a big role well because it's protein it's you can make it into a drink but all of a sudden it's more palatable because it's got different texture. well it's like nitro coffee right yeah, oh, yeah. You just, all you're doing is throwing nitro oh see look how excited yeah. oh my god it's like it's pretty much just coffee with some fucking nitrogen in it you know what i'm saying it's nothing there's, <sighs> it's not like a new recipe it's not like a special bean you know what i'm saying just loves they, it they so shoot much. some oh, nitrogen nitro. into it oh it's so hey, good but that, I, but to your point i mean that just shows you how complex the science is I to know. this and how much you can manipulate something by i mean that is literally the ninja cream is literally a boring ass if you use whey or whatever you use protein shake that's just whipped yeah into an ice cream yeah and yet you've does not taste anything like my protein shake like no, if i were no. to drink a protein shake and then eat that i'd be like no these are not the same thing but no. they are exactly the same thing just with air in it i know it's wild i know i love it, Super I love it. speaking wild. of like, like health and science and stuff like you know rfk right he's supposed to be like the head of like this new health initiative or whatever which I, I've never been ever had any hope in government policy with health because no. they're just, they're the worst. It's always flopped, too. I trust a fitness influencer with Dude, 2,000 every followers. time they've tried to <laughs> change, <laughs> yeah, every time they've tried to change, like, the, the kids' meals at the cafeteria, yeah. it's been, like, completely just all of a sudden, oh. you know, they, they just run away from oh, it. Oh, well, the initial food pyramid was, so all, many was to support processed foods. Lobbyists oh. in there that oh. get in the way. and it's like, terrible. It's just yeah. a nightmare. Terrible. But here he is, and he's in there talking about certain things. Now, I will say this. I think, and I don't know if this is him or if this is social media, but they're they're play they're they're mixing up the priorities a little bit. Like right now, the big news is on seed oils, oh. and uh, he's going to meet with all. I don't know if you guys saw this. He's going to have a meeting with all the fast food companies and convince them to remove seed oils and replace them with like beef tallow and stuff like that. Sweet. That's not going to solve obesity, everybody. Not even come close. I, I mean, no, but the fries will finally taste good again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, it might. It might get a bunch of fitness people fat. <laughs> yeah. Make fries taste good again yeah. on my hat. You know, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. That's. I mean, in, 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 is it going to be healthier? Probably, but is it going to call? It's not going to solve a lot of a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's like I got a little bit of optimism with it. Yeah. You know, at least somebody's in there that's like kind of stirring it. Well, up. he's like the first health person in government that looks healthy, healthy. Yeah. yeah have you seen like, these, these he cares have he you knows. seen these administrators of health of other countries They're, why are they all or our country <laughs> are you have, serious? You seen, have you seen our previous the triple one? chin just, like oh dude how does that bad. happen I don't, I don't even know <laughs> i mean that just i mean to me that just highlights like how how the game of politics is played it's like it really does not matter it don't matter it doesn't matter what all. you know it's <laughs> no, <laughs> like 100 percent who you know <laughs> totally 100 <laughs> hey speaking of science uh so uh, one of our one of the companies we work with eterna i confirm this it's a skincare product it's actual stem cells you can actually apply on your skin. So I heard Katrina talking wow. to you when you were asking her about it. And it, did I hear correctly that they actually have a patent on it? So That's nobody, right. Oh, it was only available in Japan. We uh, now have it here. And it's actual. St so if you want stem cell skin treatment, mm -hmm. Eterna has it. And you, by the way, when you make it, you have to refrigerate it because they're cells. But you use it on your face. So I know she loves it. Doug's been using it, which, you know, Doug likes to keep things secret. I don't keep a secret. Yeah, you do. I do everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's it right there. That's it right there. It's actual stem cells. So, uh, oh. is uh, is Japan ahead of us in their well, regulations? Are yeah, different. their regulations are different. The U.S. restricts a lot of this type of research. Well, yeah, yeah. It's being RFK. That was one thing that excited me a bit too. Is like some of these things, like stem cell research and peptide also stuff. peptides. Yeah, like it, yeah. it's like lifting a lot of the restriction on that. It's going to be great. Yeah, it'll be good. Speaking of Doug hiding things from us, do you know what else he's <laughs> learning? 
Do you, you guys know what he's been doing? Oh, yeah. He's calligraphy. Oh, no, no, no. no, no there's there's one more else. thing I've already told you guys. No, oh, you haven't oh, told it's anybody. The flute. It's the flute, yeah. Yeah, dude. The skin flute? It's Japanese. No. Oh, come on, Adam. <laughs> I have to make everything dirty. <laughs> <laughs> he plays that. I mean, come on, dude. Ah, dude yeah, give it to me uh, underhand like Yeah, that. no, the Japanese, uh, what is it? It's called a shakuhachi. Shakuhachi. It's like yeah. the, is it a big, long wood one? Yeah, well, it's, it's a, like it's about a foot and a half. It's the one you hear in Karate Kid in the beginning. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what it is. It's oh, like if you hear like samurai movies and things like that. It's it's Ooh. very got a very distinctive yeah. kind of haunting sound to it. So, so how does that, so how does, so it, wait, it, like, tell me I imagine how, water dripping. And then like, like I know how like, I, or at least I think, <laughs> I think I can, buckets, I can draw back to like where all of my weird obsessions or things I'm into like stem from. Like where does, how does like Doug all of a sudden go like, I'm going to learn this weird ass flute. It's, like, it's Japanese culture. He I loves get that, it. but I mean, like, why that? Is it, did no, you see it at a convention and go, "That's really no"? Cool. I heard an instrument, and for some reason, it just struck me. Okay, I mean, so, I, I just out of the blue, I go, "I got to figure out what that instrument is." Then I found, oh, that's this flute called the shakuhachi. So I, I ordered one online. Okay, come to find out, it was it was made in Hong Kong, and uh, <laughs> it, it looks good, but fake? it doesn't really work oh, that it, great. Like a fake yeah, knockoff. Wait, so a real one is expensive? Well, it depends. Okay. I mean, some of them are very expensive. They can be twenty thousand dollars. Whoa! For why? A, like what? Okay, because for one thing, the bamboo is has to be cut to a very specific length, meaning uh, where the joints are in the bamboo have oh. to be exactly in the right spot for mm -hmm. the uh, the length of the the flute. So there's multiple lengths. Now the shakuhachi is based off of the length of the forearm of the emperor, the shaku. Okay. And then hachi means eight. So it's 1.8 shaku. So that's the 1.8 of the emperor's length of his arm. And that's the standard size of the flute, okay? Which is like a little over a foot and a half. And then they have bigger ones, but they're all called shaku hachi. So, yeah, very fascinating. Imagine so that means you have to, what makes it so unique is being able to find a, a piece of bamboo that lines up perfectly. I would yeah, think. they have, have to have first it. find the bamboo that lines up perfectly, and then they cure the bamboo, and sometimes it's for 10 plus years. Wow. So it dries out because bamboo will crack, so they have to cure it. Wow, so like crazy and then they, craftsmanship. They bore it out and they do the holes. There's only five holes in the instrument, and they have to be obviously in the very correct right place so, so how you bore it out again so <laughs> so you watch like the right stradivarius you just you, just, uh, <laughs> you know you just bore it out so. like <laughs> okay <laughs> adam always making sorry. things dirty I'm all right sorry, just, <laughs> hey, listen. so he, you knew he was he was learning this i did mention I did, it to I did, both yeah, I, did, yeah. I, did, I just actually. found out i forgot i forgot i forgot well, you it's know like, what? For like four months right three four months uh yeah since maybe that'll be our new intro yeah maybe that'd be cool so but can, here's, can you lead the rats out of uh, San Jose? Yeah, maybe. Uh, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of them it's here. Kind of flute. Trust okay. me. But the interesting thing is, is there's no reed. There's no, there's just a hollow tube. And then one edge is cut. So it's just purely, you know, your air from your mouth. Does it whistle by itself or do you have to blow specifically in a different way? You to have to blow right into that place where it's cut on oh. the, and it's very, Fine. It took me over a week just to make a holes? sound out of it. Yeah, five, five of them. Five holes. Yeah. Five holes. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Wow. So how often are you practicing this? I play it a little bit every day. Did you hire someone or are you doing it online? No, no. I hired somebody. Oh, you actually hired yeah, some yeah. person or virtual? Uh virtual. Yeah. Wow. Dude. So he's doing that. He's doing the calligraphy. He's gonna be I feel like he's getting ready to move on us. What? Well, <laughs> move where? <laughs> to Japan? Yeah. I'm out of here. Tired I'm tired of gonna, your guys' bullshit. I'm gonna go sit on the street yeah, corner and play the sell flute. My shares, you have start gardening and raking, you know. Oh the, yeah. The, I don't know if I'm into that yet. How come you never did uh like uh karate you or know what? martial arts? In hindsight, I wish I did when I lived there. Yeah. Uh, I just didn't have any interest. Actually, honestly, when I lived there, I had very little interest in Japanese culture in general. I've gained all that interest oh, that's after weird. I came back. Yeah. Oh, that's I didn't know that. Yeah. That's kind of interesting. You would love karate, dude. Yeah, I had a roommate in Japan. She was into kendo. Oh, that's a stick fighting. Yeah, which is uh, really cool. But I'm going to tell you this. When she came back in with her up. gear, oh, no, it stunk. You oh, know, you, oh, you're sweating and just very... It's like any sport. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's like very thick cloth and stuff yeah, uh, on these things. Oh, and it just gets like... <laughs> yeah. Oh, That's yeah. funny. I would, Yeah, I, I can't wait to hear you play, dude. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I maybe can feel like I can actually do ja something. Japanese yeah. culture fascinates me. I've never been there. It fascinates me. I want to go there, too. Just because when I did judo as a kid, where I did judo at, over at the Buddhist temple in downtown San Jose, 
it, it was taught by like actual Japanese instructors. Yeah, yeah. And it was very traditional. By the way, so different from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So the culture, so different. Like <laughs> judo, like you walk in, you bow, you bow, you greet the the, the senseis are very like you don't show up late, you don't talk. Jiu Jitsu is like, hey, how you doing? Uh, come on in. Yeah, when are we gonna start? I don't know. It's very loose. Yeah, Brazilian culture versus Japanese culture is you totally can totally different. feel oh, totally different. I mean, I feel like we all want to go there, but we all want to go there for different reasons. I want to go there for sushi and the sneaker culture. That's what I want to go there for. They have a big sneaker culture, bro. Japan? Yeah. Yes. Really? Yeah, look it up. Look up Japan's sneaker culture. Do you know how safe? <clears throat> have you ever looked at the crime statistics over there? It's super safe. It's this, it's like crazy safe. Ridiculously safe. Why is, what's the, what do they attribute it to? It's they cut culture. your hand off if you steal something? No, their laws are <laughs> normal. They're just culture. Just very, 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 very. Uh, Polite, friendly. Very or organized, like great, you know. Yeah, they got, they have, they have crazy sneaker culture over there. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know the towns very well, like where where probably Tokyo, yeah, yeah. I like would Tokyo. imagine it's Tokyo. I went to one time. But they had like really cool. Have shops. you ever seen somebody in the locker room with the the the, the tattoos that are? It looks like they're wearing a shirt. Yakuza. They say that that's what that well, is. Well, that's right? what isn't that where it came from? Right. I think so. Yeah. I saw one. Never. I only saw one time. It was an older Japanese man, and he he was dressed normal, and he takes his shirt off, and it was literally like. There was a gap in the middle for where you might see it, right. and everything ended where the sleeves ended. And yeah. he was fully tatted I've on his back, on his front. That, yeah. Likely Yakuza. Really? Yeah. 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 Wow. Had yeah. Full body tattoo. Actually, if you go to like the hot springs, the onsen in Japan, if you have tattoos in a lot of places, you can't even go in. They won't let you in. No, none of you could go in. I can. Oh, really? I have one you on my you have one. Yeah. And your low back. No, I don't. I'm a low back. <laughs> they do like yeah. dolphins. Hey, unicorn boy, you're out. <laughs> you're out. <laughs> it's a, it's a scary unicorn. It's a metal it's, unicorn. It's, it's, yeah. it's jumping over a rainbow, bro. Come on, <laughs> it's, it's too it's much. Not, it's not. This is too it's much. A, you're not it's, a, it's, it's an Isaac horn. Newton prism. That's what it is. No, I don't have a unicorn tattoo. Why always say everything? Everybody thinks I actually. <laughs> well, my, hey, my favorite things are the things I lie about you guys know, that take off. Like people, people still this day think Doug's like ninety. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> he looks good for He's 90. so good for ninety. <laughs> it's because he uses Eterna. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Eterna, look at you. I brought I'm gonna stem cells. I'm gonna start a rumor about Justin soon. I haven't decided what it's gonna be yet. I'm yeah, he did that like butt tickling one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> right. I'm gonna, I am gonna, Some people are like, "What? I, what is he I, doing?" I missed that. I missed that this year. I'm gonna have to. Like, bring, I'm not the butt tickler. Okay. Do you remember that? Every year I would post. That every year I'd post the same exact pose. <laughs> yeah. It was so good, dude. It was such a good, <laughs> such a good post. Hey, hey again. so shout out. This is going to be from our forum. Doug, do you have that? Can you pull it up? This was a uh, some commentary from <clears throat> one of our forum um, individuals. In fact, I can probably pull it. I up can bring stuff. it up. Uh, Jeff Bourne. I will. I will read it right here. Okay. okay. So the 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 shout out is for Jeff Bourne. He's in our private forum. He's talking about Maps Prime. So he's talking about how he was super tight, stiff, with restricted range of motion everywhere, um, despite static stretching three to five days a week. Like it just, it just wasn't happening. Then he did Maps Prime, and he's like totally blown away. He's also a Czech practitioner, functional health coach. Oh so, wow! So, yeah. so to impress him. That's pretty cool, yeah, right? Because <clears throat> check the Czech great. course is legit, right? Super so legit. he knows what he's doing. But he using Prime, uh, it's totally made a huge difference in how um, he feels. He's Is he using, doing Prime or Prime Pro? He's using Prime. Oh, and he's doing the the zone tests and oh, doing yeah. some of the stuff from there. Yeah. And he's yeah, and he's using it on his on his clients and stuff like I that. I mean, so. I still stand by that as one of the more, more proud things that we've done. Totally. Yeah, yeah. I totally. think I think it's uh, speaking of which, by the way, this Doug, this is Black Friday today. When yes, today oh, is Black entries. Listen, hey, real quick. The Triple Crown. It's 60, Who wants it? Sixty percent off all maps programs and all bundles right now. And this was Adam's idea: triple entries for the maps. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mind Pump Vacation, five day vacation at the Mind Pump Park City House, which is all optimized for and that's, health and fitness. We got red many? light therapy. You got a gym. You got cold dip. You got sauna. You got everything in there. How, how long is the triple entries? How many days? Uh, till Sunday. Till Sunday. Till yep. Sunday. You got till Sunday to get triple. So you go to uh, mapsfitnessproducts.com and then the code is Black Friday for the discount. And then, so you get a bundle, you get 30 entries now. Yes. You get a single program, you get 15 entries. Just for that window though. It's between now and then Sunday. After That's that, it. back to normal. Make it happen. Let's go. Hey, real quick. Uh, probiotics have been shown to improve gut health, nutrient absorption, your skin and your mood. And the best 
probiotic in the world by far is seed. Nobody comes close to seed. Go check them out. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code 25 mind pump. Get 25% off your first month's order. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Victor from North Carolina. What's up, man? <clears throat> Welcome to the show. How can we help you? Hey, how y'all doing? We're Thank good. you. How y'all doing? All right, man. How you doing? <laughs> what up? Awesome. 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 Uh, can I give a quick, uh, quick shout out before we get started with my question? Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to shout out to my wife, Katia. She's been uh, doing these MAPS programs with me this year, and uh, she's uh, really benefited from your guys' programs and your nutrition advice. Her, uh, her guns are bigger than mine, and it's super impressive. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. All right. So what's going on? Awesome. But yeah, so I just had a question regarding uh, training volume and when you know it's your body's ready to handle it. Um, so I'm just going to go through my question here. My question is regarding how you will know when you're ready to run a MAPS program that is higher in volume. I've been trade training consistently for about six years. I first learned to mind pump after Sal made an appearance on Joe DeFranco's podcast. Uh, I was blown away at the concept of cardio being a terrible way to lose fat. But after Sal broke it down on Joe's podcast, it was like a veil was removed from my eyes and I could see clearly now. Um, I bought the RGB bundle last November during the Black Friday sale and I recently completed it. Uh, in the third phase of aesthetic, I started suffering from poor sleep, increased irritableness and low libido. libido. Uh, I thought it was a result of low testosterone because in January I had my blood work checked and my testosterone was around 487, which I always thought was, wasn't optimal. Uh, I had my testosterone checked again and it actually went up to 742 in August. So your programs really work. Awesome. Um, I, ca <clears throat> I came across one episode where a caller was describing similar symptoms that I was feeling and you guys figured out they were overtraining. And I felt so dumb for not realizing what that was happening to me since I was running aesthetic in a cut and the volume goes up in phase three. Yep. Um, I was going to go into map split and I actually did the first workout, but after listening to you guys talk about overtraining and how to reverse the effects of it, mm -hmm. I paused map split, took a deal of the week instead of focusing on getting around 8,000 steps, mobility and eating out of maintenance. Smart. After the deal of the week, I went into map symmetry, which shocked me with how much I enjoyed phase one with the suspension trainer. And I highly recommend it. Definitely. It's an awesome program. Uh, I got to the last phase and went to a maintenance with my calories. I finished symmetry and I'm currently running power lift and a maintenance. It will probably go to a slight bulk when I get to phase two. Uh, when I'm done with power lift, I'm thinking of running maps hit and a cut since it might be a good change of stimulus from power lift. So my question is, how will I know when, when my body is ready for a higher volume program? Uh, can I do anything to prepare for a higher volume program? So I rotate between lower volume and higher volume pro programs. Um, I'm planning on picking up a few more programs during the Black Friday sale. And I'd be discouraged if my body can never handle some of the uh, more intense programs. First of all, um, excellent, excellent uh, analysis and pivot. I mean, uh, what you did pick up on and then what you pivoted to uh, was awesome. I mean, that's the advice you probably would have heard from all of us. So yeah. I, I think, you know, this is it's it's really hard uh to say that, right? And I'm, by the way, this is like something that's like going through uh, my head right now. It's like I'm wanting to scale my volume, and I'm, I'm I'm getting these little nagging injuries, and I'm like, shit, man, I'm nowhere near what I I've handled before. And a lot of it has uh, more to do just with the context of what currently is going on in your life, right? Like if, uh, if you're in a season of you know calorie surplus, you're well rested, you've addressed a lot of mobility stuff this might be the time to start to do it. Uh, but you obviously have the tools, the knowledge and the awareness that if you start to notice that, uh, man, it's, you're, you're not seeing the results, you're plateauing, it's disrupting sleep, it's time to pivot out of it. Um, I don't know if there's a clear indication of like, okay, you've done X, Y, and Z, you're ready for this. It's kind of more like, okay, I think, I think I'm ready for this. Let's see how my body responds and feels. And then just don't get overly committed to it. Just be open to if you see those signs is responding early and then moving out of it until you are. But it really does matter uh, all the other variables, right? Yeah. Like <clears throat> in your life at the time. And your stress bucket this, is a big this, factor. <clears throat> the signs that you're doing too much are much more clear right than the ones that you then signs that you can or you should do, uh, do more also consider this <clears throat> a lot of people don't realize this but if you get stronger your volume went up uh so in other words or you do more reps right so if you're doing a, a a let's say you did maps anabolic right which is for most people kind of an appropriate level of volume and you're following that program and you added 20 mm -hmm. pounds to your squat well you just added volume 
to your lower body, yeah. right? You added, you know, you 15 pounds to your overhead it, press. Loaded intensity. <clears throat> right. So people tend to think of volume and what they think of are sets. Oh, it's going to be, it's got to be just more sets. No, no. If you're getting stronger, the volume is scaling up on its own. So consider that. So if you're following a program and you're getting stronger and you're progressing, there's no need to add any volume. The volume is being added already. It's automatic. Um, so, so consider that when you're following a program. Also consider that for most people, you know, 80% of the time you're going to be coasting. There's that 20% where you kind of sprint with your training. Because what tends to happen is we'll throw in those sprints where we add more and then we see more progress and then we stay in the sprint <clears throat> and we burn ourselves out. The, what's more important, uh, I think is backing out of the sprint before you hit a hard wall or plateau or noticing the signs before they get really loud. So it's like, okay, I'm doing great. Everything's going good. I'm getting stronger. Uh, I'm not really getting stronger anymore, but let me see what's happening. I kind of feel tired. My sleep is a little disrupted time to back down versus I'm going to keep pushing until it gets so obvious, uh, that I have to really, you know, kind of back down. When you look at our higher volume programs, like split <clears throat> or aesthetic, those are appropriate for people who have everything kind of put together, sleep, stress, diet, and they're going to follow them maybe once a year. Mm -hmm. They're not going to follow them all the time. No. That's like a once a year program. MAPS Anabolic is probably the kind of volume that you'll be following most of the time. And there's lots that we have a lot of programs that kind of fall in that category. Symmetry would be like that. Performance uh, is kind of similar with its volume. Also consider uh, one of the things that you did, which is very common, uh, but it's a mistake, is when people go into a higher rep uh, phase, they tend to think that's fat loss time and they cut their calories at the same time. Not a great idea <clears throat> because increasing the reps tends to generally increase the volume even though the weight goes down. So to give you an example, 20 reps uh, with 200 pounds in a squat is going to be more volume than five reps with 315. Even though I'm lifting way more weight, 315 for five, even if it's intense, isn't going to hammer me like 20 reps with 200 pounds. Okay, so higher reps tends to, and this isn't always true, but it tends to be more volume as well. So personally, it's and this is opposite of what people think. Low rep phases tend to do better with cuts than high rep phases. Uh, and, and you'll get lean. You'll get lean doing it uh, that way. Really, the, the leanness has to do with the calorie deficit. But dropping your calories and ramping up your volume at the same time, now you've just thrown a lot at your body. So consider that as well. I, I also <laughs> always like to consider uh, shorter bouts of cutting and or bulking, yeah. right? Like I'm trying to hover around and kind of like, I don't know if you're paying attention <clears throat> to my series right now on, on YouTube, but for the most part, I'm kind of hovering around maintenance with these slight, you know, surpluses for a couple weeks and then slight decreases for a couple weeks, never really staying uh, in one for very long. Uh, I think that helps to mitigate the amount of stress because if I'm in a low calorie deficit <clears throat> and I'm training pretty hard consistently for a long period of time, the, the compounding effects of yeah. that stress tends to exacerbate some of the problems that can happen with achy joints and <clears throat> sleep and all the things that you might feel disrupted. Also, <clears throat> also following up a program like Aesthetic, you probably want to follow up with a low vol volume program before you move back into a high volume one. Even if you did great, you probably don't want to go aesthetic to split right out the gates. Um, aesthetic to anabolic to MAPS 15 for most people or performance or symmetry is probably a, a, a better approach. So what, what are you doing right now? What program are you in right now? Right now, I'm in uh, week one of uh, power lift and I'm doing it in a maintenance. <clears throat> okay. So after that, symmetry would be good. So would, um, uh, probably I think symmetry would be the best, uh, performance mm -hmm. might even be good to follow up with that. And then after that, um, then you could do like a maps 15 and then jump back into some higher volume training. Yeah. I was going to say with maps hit fall in the category of uh, lower volume. Like I understand, like it's kind of more intense, but the, it's not as many sets throughout the week or would that be considered like a, was so be considered a higher high volume because of the intensity or <clears throat> good question. Great question. Mm -hmm. Uh, hit is a very short program. I would put it in the middle 
uh, of our programs in terms of how it okay. affects the body. HIT is not a program that you follow over mm -hmm. and over again. It's, you just follow it once and then you, you move into some right. more traditional. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you were to look at like a mm -hmm. year yeah. of good training for most people, most of the time, they're going to spend most of their time in... Yeah, these are the peaks. You know, you're going to go really high volume or you're going to end up, you know, with high intensity type of, of programming and you just don't want to live in them for too long. Those, want, you know taking those through their full course and like going through the program. But then I would, I would stay pretty low volume pretty much like throughout the year for the majority of it. Yeah. I like, so I like symmetry after power lift. And after that, I like anabolic advanced, if you feel good. I, I really think too that okay. Victor, you, you, you've got a pretty good, I mean, nobody is going to have a better <clears throat> insight on you and how you feel than you. Yeah. So right now you're hearing us kind of speculate and, you know, oh, I'd probably go here and do this, but if you're feeling really good and you move into nothing wrong with testing the waters and maps aesthetic, and it, it, you, you seem pretty self-aware, you start noticing sleep getting disrupted, achy joints, plateau and strength, yeah. then just pivot out, mm -hmm. you know, pivot out and go up. Oh, well, that's my body. Cause let me tell you, yep. I've been doing this for well over 20 years <clears throat> and I still make this mistake. Yep, same. I, I still same here. say, Hey oh, man, I'm ready yeah. for this. I'm going to do it. And then I start doing it. What I've gotten better about as I've gotten older and wiser and more experienced is I, I catch the signs earlier I because I'm, I'm paying attention and I'm open-minded. I'm not stubborn where I'm like, I'm going to run this MAPS aesthetic program no matter what and just hammer myself. I go, oh, shit, I'm starting to notice sleep's getting right. disrupted. Oh, you know what? I just regressed in strength this last week. You know what? I, I better actually j dip yeah. over to like MAPS 15 for a little while. So there's, you know, and that and that's really the real art of this is you've got all these different, pro you got all the great programs, you got the tools, you've got the experience now. Um, uh, we can sit here all day and speculate and tell you what we think you should do. But at the end of the day, it's like, you're going to know the best by going through that. Just be aware and, and pay attention early and, and get better mm -hmm. at reading the signs earlier. And it, there's no, it's not like you're going to regress because all of a sudden no. you're in uh, yeah. phase uh, two of MAPS aesthetic and all of a sudden you have to pivot to MAPS 15. Like, in fact, you'll probably you'll get better results because yeah. result you noticed it early <clears throat> and then you moved <clears throat> over to something else and then run that for a while. Then you start feeling really good. And then maybe you dip back into one of those programs you think that has higher volume and then again, pay attention. And so, you know, let, let the body, uh, you know, talk to you and dictate, uh, you know, how you, how you feel and what you do, because we can sit here like experts and tell you what's best. But the truth is nobody knows that better than, than you do. As long as you're open-minded, not stubborn about not listening to the signals your body's trying to give you. You already have symmetry. Uh, I'll send you anabolic advance. Cause I think that'd be a good program to follow afterwards. Oh, Oh, perfect. So do that one after power lift. No, do symmetry and then do anabolic advanced if you feel great. Yeah, I like that. Okay. I like that. Okay. And that's, yeah. a, you know, what's cool about Sounds maps good, anabolic yes. uh, maps anabolic is cool because Sal designed it to where, you have these little bouts of higher intensity, then back off. High intensity, high, high intensity low volume, low volume, off, lower intensity. Which tends, I mm -hmm. I tend to do better with that. With these <clears> short, <throat> just like I said, I, I love shortcut, short bulks. I love short bouts of intensity, back off, then intensity, back totally. off versus pe whole long period. And I, Maps Aesthetic was really inspired by the peak of my bodybuilding career. Like I was feeling it. I was in the zone. Mm -hmm. I was dialed perfect. And so that was really when we wrote your that, job. Yeah, exactly. It was inspired by that. That was the appropriate time for me to do it. Where I'm at in my life now, I'm, I'm nowhere near that level of discipline around sleep and diet and everything else. It's like I, I probably couldn't even handle that for a long period of time. So I like these programs like Ma Maps on a Bulk Advanced where I get to do a little bit of that intensity, but then I get back right off right afterwards. My body tends to handle that better. Perfect. Yeah, I think what also messed me up was I got to phase three of aesthetic. I added in another focus session day. The week, so it also increased the volume and I was in a cut. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And I was like in the last week, I'm like, I understand y'all are saying like, yeah, it, understand your body pivot and don't feel like you have to finish. But I got to the last week. I'm like, I need to finish this program, but definitely going to heed, heed caution next time and pivot if I need to definitely understand. So appreciate y'all uh, breaking it, that down for me. Yeah, for you sure, bro. It. Keep going, dude. You're doing great. Cool. All right, Victor. I appreciate you. it. If I, if I could just like give you all some, yeah, if I can ahead. give you your flowers real quick. Go ahead. Thank you. I love flowers. Um, I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to share. Uh, uh, Justin, I uh, got my daughter enrolled in gymnastics. She had her first class last week. And a lot of it was inspired from your discussion about Man. your kids going through it as well. And, and I'm super excited. She loves it. She's been really um, uh, encouraged by it. Um, Adam, oh, I am yeah. following your docuseries on YouTube. So I'm one of the... Uh, I'm one of those that are actually watching it and the Mind Pump channel. So right. definitely appreciate you sharing that. And that program you're talking about riding, man, I'm super eager to to buy that once it's ready. And um, 
Sal, I've been uh, really encouraged by your sharing your faith journey going on. And I actually DM'd you back in May after you shared the story about um, you had a uh, past someone that was asking for money and then you were listening to the Bible in the car yeah. and you turned back to to give them something. And I actually shot, shot your DM and I was shocked that you replied. You said, thank you. And I, I, I was awesome. I was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, brother. Right on, man. <laughs> Thank I was you, man. Pumped. All right. Thank you, Victor. Have a great day. Thank Thanks you for calling. Thank you, brother. Bye. You know, that's funny. It's a, what, he mentioned something that's a, that's a common mistake, too, is you'll be following a program and you'll feel good. Yes, yeah, so you add more. You, yeah. you <laughs> add more, but you add more like with three different variables. It's like, I'm going to go harder yeah. and I'm going to add an exercise yeah. and I'm going to add frequency or whatever. And cut calories. Instead of just it's adding one thing. when you're feeling good. Like yeah. when you add volume, just do one thing, one thing, not all the things. All the in all time. though, I, I yeah. do want to, you know, like commend him, like what yeah. he did to pivot out mm -hmm. of that. And then the series He's of things. Smart. Yeah. 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 He, I mean, I think, and I, and I just wanted to make that clear too, because we could sit here all day, like a bunch of experts and say, this is how I would do it. But it's right. like, he lives in his body. Not yeah. Us. And, and how, often do you guys still yeah. make this mistake ourselves oh uh, yeah yeah like, such individual experience yeah, yeah and there's so, so many times where i think i'm ready and then my body reminds me no it's not yeah, the mistake <laughs> I, the mistake i make is the last place i lose is uh, look at is reducing my training it's like oh i gotta eat more i gotta sleep more let me <laughs> yeah. add another peptide yeah and <laughs> after four weeks i'm like all right <laughs> i'm doing too much our next caller is madison from north carolina hi madison hey madison how can we help you hello <laughs> Hello guys, thank y'all for having me on today and thank you guys for everything that you do. Um, I'm going to read my question because I tend to ramble. We're not going to do that today. So um, here it goes. I've been lifting for about seven years. Um, absolutely love it. Strength training is all I do. <laughs> um, so much so that I decided to make it a career. Um, it took a short break to have two kids. For the most part though, my strength has greatly increased except for my squat. Um, it's always been my weakest lift, and it seems to be getting worse lately. Um, most recently, I've ran into the issue of lower back pain um, during a squat. Um, I'm thinking potentially I've developed an anterior pelvic tilt for some reason. <laughs> um, I avoided squats for a really long time because um, I just got frustrated with them, didn't have any confidence in the lift, um, but recently started following y'all's programs and um, added them back in. I know you guys say that your weakest lift is where your most potential is, so I listened, even though I hate them. Um, I'm wondering what I can do to fix this. I don't know if this is a mental block. Um, don't know how I can increase strength in this. Um, I, a little more background. Um, I used to have issues with like my knees caving in. I fixed that. I leaned forward too much. I thought I fixed that. Um, had shoulder pain in the squat. I fixed that. It has been my arch nemesis for years. Um, my left side's way weaker than my right. My right tends to take over. Um, but recently I've been trying to squat a bit deeper. And I think that's where the problem has come up with the lower back pain. Um, so I need help. <laughs> yeah. What program are you following? I'm following anabolic. Oh, good. Just put her in symmetry. Yeah, you you said something that made me think symmetry because yeah. your right, your left side is a lot weaker than your right. Now symmetry yeah. has squats in the last phase, okay? Which will be good. But I think uh, there might be a discrepancy between right and left. Uh, I'd like to see your ankle mobility. Yeah. Um, and if you're if you're noticing back pain, um, there's definitely ha something happening with your stability. Um, through the through the movement, either yeah. with the core, your hips, or your ankles, or all of the above. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think symmetry would be good, especially because you know. Here's the thing: most people have an asymmetry, but when you notice there's an asymmetry, it's big, mm -hmm. and that's that may be the root uh, issue. And map map symmetry will address that for you. So I think that would be the right program for you to follow. Yeah, I'd also like Doug to give you access if you don't have it already to the private forum. Because this is an example of if uh -oh. I could see you squat, I could give you even more oh, precise yeah. Yeah. advice. Like we're 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 more targeted. Yes, we're, yeah, we're advice. guessing right now on what the the big limiting factor is, but it could be really obvious. Like if we see you squat and I see that you have little to no ankle mobility, I mean that's the root you, cause. That's where you, this is coming. Have you tried elevating your heels to see if it if it feels better? I have not. And you know, the crazy thing is, you know, I can spot it in other people, but in myself, and that's, that's exactly what I do. I'd elevate the hills. But for me, I've not done it yet. I just, I, <laughs> it's like, I beat myself up before I even try anything else. Can you, can you, um, so, can you adjust the camera and, and, and squats and, and do a side view of yourself squatting just to see if we notice I anything? Can try. Y'all don't judge this crazy house over here. No, kids, no. this all tore up. You, you got kids. I know what it looks like when, <laughs> don't worry. Yes. It, 
hot mess. I'm also trying to use my phone because we don't have a laptop that works very well. Um, let me see. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to need to see your phone. All right. So I don't know how much y'all can see, though. Let me try to set it up. Yeah, I'd love to see it from, okay. the, from the ground or from well, the chair. So I, can see, I want to see your see ankles. ankles. Yeah, well, we'll see. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah there we go. See. There, we go. Oh, yeah. there we go. Yeah, yeah no, perfect. perfect. There, okay. there Do you want go. side, front? Yeah, yeah, side. Yeah, give us a yeah. side. So give us yeah. a side. Like okay. Put your hand, okay. put your okay. hands up, kind okay. of up in the air, like you're, you're doing like straight arms up in the air. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Now go ahead and start to squat. You got it? Yep, we got it. Go ahead. Okay. You know, and my knee popped, so it's really to too. <laughs> yeah, not not too bad, but let me see from the front. Can you okay. do, can you do yeah. that? Yeah. And, and let's do like yeah. five, do like five for me because that was too fast. I gotta yeah. get a chance. Five? Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. do five. Okay. Yeah, do five. All right, so same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're actually rotated a bit. Slow down. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no worries. She's got pretty good depth. Uh, yeah, yeah, ankles little, caving a little bit. A little bit of asymmetry. Right yeah, and there's a little okay. asymmetry. Yeah, map. let's do map symmetry. By the way, you got good leg development, so yep. you've gotten away without oh, doing... Uh, you've, got, you've gotten away without doing uh, lots of squats. I think I think map symmetry might actually fix this for you. Do you have yeah. Prime Pro, by the way? doesn't look too severe. I don't. That's one that I've been, been wanting to get because I know that it can help me as well as my clients. So yeah, yeah. I do not have that one though. Let's send, do you have symmetry? I don't know. Well, you're about to have two free programs. We never do that, Madison. Yeah, but I'm going to send those both to you. You guys are the best. And then I want Thank you. <laughs> I want you in the forum also, so we can so we can watch as we go okay. through this, yeah. and then use it like use it by showing yes. the videos like that. This is a strength. This is probably a strength issue, and not necessarily a stability or mobility issue, because you look like you have decent. Okay flexibility control yeah it looked like your foot was collapsing a little bit from the front uh and i probably when i what i would do if i were your trainers i would load you and then i'd watch it again and typically with load you start to see things that you don't see without load uh but it looks like you have mm -hmm. the flexibility so there might be just a strength issue when you start to load yourself uh, but if you notice a difference okay. between right and left then it's definitely there mm -hmm. so let's follow map symmetry okay. and see what happens and then uh madison are you are you uh, are you signed up for the free webinar with Sal and I already for trainers? I did one um, a couple of weeks ago. It's it's hard with my schedule, but when I can make it, I'm trying my best to do it. Yeah, I mean you got so, it yes. because even if you even if you can't make it, if you sign up, you'll get the replay email to you for free. So just, okay. yeah, yeah. So right, okay. I'll have Doug yeah. send the link yeah. over to you so you can make sure. Yes, yeah, trainerwebinar.com, but I'll send it as well. Oh, okay, yep. thank yep. you. We'll send that link to you. Thank you guys so yeah. much. That's and good. To, good to know that it's it's potentially just strength. Really, I I've researched this problem to death, and I mean, I I just didn't even know where to turn. And I knew that you guys, y'all know what y'all are doing. So yeah, and you know, to let keep, me ask them. And keep this in mind too, Madison. When when, when we're watching from a camera, what, what, what we will notice are glaring big issues. Right. Smaller issues are much more it's difficult. To detect yeah, much more difficult person. to detect. And and you're a trainer. And so I, you know, I thought to myself, it's probably not going to be super visible, considering that you're already a trainer. I mean, it could it could be strength, stability, it could yeah. be the imbalance right to left, it could be pelvic floor. I mean, you do, you do have two children that can actually contribute to back pain. A lot of people don't know that. You see it a lot more when you're fatigued too. So. Yes. So uh, so let's do symmetry and let's see what happens after that. That sounds great. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Keep us posted in the forum so we know how things are going. I absolutely will. Yep, you'll be hearing from me. All right, Matthew. You got it. And just, just for trainers, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I no. Thought, so, oh, yeah. and just for trainers and coaches, like probably 10% of the time, someone's going to tell you, I hurt, this hurts. And maybe less than 10%, maybe 5% of the time. You can't tell. You're going to watch them. And you're going to be like, Oh, I don't know yeah, yet. The form looks good. Yeah. Which means you're going to have to do different things. Like, okay, well, let me see you do one legged toe touch. Let me see you do squat with load. Let's front load you. Let's back load you. Right. Uh, let's try, you know, these different movements. And then things start to kind of reveal themselves a little bit. Um, but 95% yeah. of the time it's obvious. The only e thing even I, walking patterns yeah. too. Yeah, there you go. Something different. I mean, the only thing I really saw was a slight external rotation on the right side more than the left. Yeah, and the yeah. foot but was if that's if that's slightly yeah. externally rotating out more, that could cause an asymmetrical shift, especially yeah. when she loads. There was a little shift. Yeah. And if there's a little bit of shift, just a small shift while you're yeah. also loaded, that'll cause some low back pain, QL type stuff for yep. sure. So that could be it. But I definitely expected to see something a lot worse when, when she first, I was like, oh, let's see. I bet she's not even going to be able to break 90. And I thought her, she was going to look really bad, but that didn't look that bad. So no. 
hopefully be a small thing that we can adjust. It's Black Friday. All programs, all bundles, everything, every maps, everything, 60% off. And if you go now until Sunday, you'll get triple entries to win a vacation five days at the Mind Pump Park City House. It's a great place. It's a good time. So if you're interested, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code Black Friday for the discount and the entries for the vacation. All right, here comes the show. Next caller is Ian from Washington. What's up, Ian? Hey, hey, what's, what's going on, Ian? Man? Hey, guys, how's it going? Oh, man, Ex excited to uh, let you uh, talk about the, the follow-up since the last time. How long ago was it when we talked for last time? Yeah, uh, so I uh, we had talked, uh, um, gosh, I guess a little over a year ago, uh, where I started my, after I heard from my teacher that I was basically voluntold that I was going to be grading uh, at the World Cup in Santiago, Chile, uh, I basically uh, had to get ready, and that's when I called you guys, because I'm like, hey, I'm 54 years old, like, I know, I know what's coming, I've done it before. So that was January, and then I talked to you guys around that time, and then I graded in December. Uh, so that was almost, I guess, about uh, eleven months ago. And so, you, so and you, and you passed, right? Yeah. Remind me and the audience what the challenge was again. I know you had to. You, didn't you have to like fight mul multiple guys in a day? Like, remind me what the challenge was. Yeah. So this is Kyokushin Karate, and I know Sal at least is familiar with with this. Uh, so. Uh, it's full contact, bare knuckle karate style, very old school in that way. Uh, and the goal was to, I was, I was grading for my sixth degree black belt test. And, um, so I knew it was going to be a full day of, you know, fitness and fundamental movements and, and all of that stuff. But then at the very end is when it's the hardest because you're doing, you're doing bare knuckle fights round after round uh with no rest so i knew i was gonna have to fight 60 fights at the end <laughs> and so i just i needed to be prepared for that yeah it's so crazy dude. <laughs> yeah. so break it down dude how did it go tell us uh the experience getting getting ready for it for it uh and then uh what how it went down yeah so the, the, i really wanted to have a, a really solid plan uh because i have huge respect for my teacher and so um he's he's a legend in Kyokushin Karate, uh, student of the founder, Sosai Oyama. And so um, after I talked to you guys, I knew I wanted to spend about six months working on some anabolic training to be able to build up some more muscle, just because I knew who was going to be at the exam. It's a multinational Olympic level competition. And so while I wasn't competing, I did have a fighter. So I'm an Olympic level trainer with, um, that I have fighters that compete at that level. And so I knew that I had to get ready, um, at that level as well. And so that's when I called you guys, uh, you had me do maps anabolic for three months, and then I did maps performance for three months. And then, um, we had talked about the right timing for the cardio portion. And we talked about the fact that it, it goes quick and it comes back quick and it doesn't last. So I did cardio about six weeks out, kind of split the difference of what you guys had all recommended. You recommended four to eight weeks. Um, and the key thing that I did, so I don't know if you guys know, but um, since we talked, I'm an integrative health practitioner also with Dr. Cabral. And uh, what I did in the middle before I did my cardio was I did a seven day functional medicine detox. So after I did my anabolic and my performance training, I felt like my base was really good and I was I was really happy with where that was. I gained about five to six pounds of lean muscle and uh, oh. I, my body could take a lot more damage. And then, uh, cause that was really the goal is to be able to just withstand that. And then from there, um, I did a, a seven day functional medicine detox, dropped eight pounds of straight fat. And then the cardio was a breeze. It just, I, I couldn't believe because I'd never done a, a, a detox like that. And so I was amazed at how, how useful it was on an athletic level to be able to help with that. So uh, the exam starts with, uh, you have 20 pound dumbbells and you do shoulder press, press until you can't lift them anymore. And so my goal was to be able to hit 70 reps and I hit 70 reps. So I had trained for that. And then, uh, and then it goes into, you know, the pushups, all the, all the other stuff to exhaustion. Uh, and then the foundational martial movements, 
caught up, you know, that kind of stuff. And then it ends with the fighting. So uh, the, the test went great. Um, I, I had lots of stamina. Um, I felt really strong. It was 95 degrees, high humidity. Um, and I just, I felt great. I felt prepared and, uh, and in large part to what you guys had recommended. So I really appreciate that. That's awesome. And then the, the, the matches sure. afterwards. So correct me if I'm wrong, but the rules of Kyokushin full contact is it's, uh, bare knuckle punches and kicks and knees to the body. You can also kick to the head and knee to the head. Yes, correct. Okay. We don't punch to the face. Well, we punch to the face in my dojo just because uh, you have to learn to protect the head, and uh, so and you got to protect hands. So um, we don't we don't punch to the face with bare knuckle just because it's disfiguring. But mm -hmm. um, but that is part of the training for a lot of people. But you also get you get kicked in the head though. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and if you suck at it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you're doing this, how do you go through sixty? Is it time like fight this guy for this time fight, this, or do you have to win all of them? How does that work? Um, you you have to stand up after all of them so they're gonna push you way oh, you past have to, you have to withstand what? it oh wow you just you just have to you just have to endure so you know um I, i've done this this rodeo before so i knew what was involved but you're never really prepared so it was just it you know it's it, the, the exam is 10 hours long and then you do the fights so it's like you, you're 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 constantly fatigued and it's really just all guts the second half of the exam especially the fighting it's just all guts uh what they call spirit that's the the most important thing the desire to get back up and and now you're do you are you all i mean you got to be all banged and bruised up afterwards what's the recovery look like afterwards yeah that's a that's such a good question so uh, i've been playing around a lot with um with my recovery so I took some pictures I could show you guys, I, I, all black and blue, all up and down my forearms, all over my arms, you know, like you get tired to the point like that and you're just trying to cover your 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 main organs, right? You don't want anybody to get a liver shot because then you're, then you're really like hurting. So trying to just cover up the spleen, cover up the liver, and that means your shoulders, your biceps, your tries. Uh, you know, your, your obliques, those are all open on some level, especially, you know, these are, these are fresh fighters. And so, you know, some of them are multinational champions. That's crazy. Uh, you know, they could kill you if they wanted to, but I'm glad they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. Yeah, well, that's, that's yeah, that's, I, I watch, I watch, uh, 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 that kind of full contact karate, um, all the time. Uh, I, I think it's, uh, one of the best, uh, full contact combat sports. I think it's just so rad. And I also, I especially love watching the karate uh, versus Muay Thai fights. That's, I think mm -hmm. it's like a cool rivalry. Yep. And you say, and you, you, I mean, it's it goes back and forth. These guys are brutal. It's insane. But these karate guys are, um, yeah, they're tough, man. They are some of the toughest strikers you'll find um, in in any sport. I know. I think uh, George St. Pierre wasn't he Kyo Kyokushin? He, yeah, he is Kyokushin. Dolph Lundgren is Kyokushin. Uh, Sean Connery, when he was alive, was Kyokushin. So, you know, they, they never made it sort of high profile. George St. Pierre, I guess, is the most high profile guy. But, um, you know, they all embody sort of that humility that goes along with it because, you know, that's just part of it. You got to you got to strive, but you also got to, you know, keep your head in check. That's, that's awesome. That do you do cool. the hand conditioning, too? or Because you, or you, I've, I've seen some of the knuckles of some of these uh, older senseis <laughs> and they yeah. look their knuckles are bigger than my, my hand. Yeah. No, it's a good point. Um, so I'm a I'm a professor, so I, I have to type for a living. So uh, <laughs> it's all a matter of degrees. So you can always tell that you know somebody's got build up on their on their first two knuckles uh, if they if they do any kind of conditioning or if they know how to fight. So uh, mine don't look like an Okinawan Masters because I have to use my hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like cauliflower ear for wrestlers. Yeah, yeah, guys, totally, yeah. totally, very so, much so. So, yeah. uh, Ian, uh, now that that's done, um, what are you following right now? So, what, where did you transition into uh, maps program wise and stuff? What are you up to? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, some days, um, you know, the, the, my day job is can be stressful and just trying to find time, like everybody, just struggling to find time to be able to fit it all in. So. Maps 15 is super good for that. Perfect, um, yeah. I've also put together uh, just, you know, the, the Maps 40 Plus is a game changer, really. 
Oh, awesome. uh, so I'm 55 now and just really the, the multi-joint muscle movement activation, um, you know, really focusing on adaptation, not doing four, five, six sets of anything, doing a whole body all, you know, every time I go in, I'm starting at the floor and I'm working my way up. So the sequencing um, really just works well for me. And I feel like, you know, Sal mentioned something earlier about uh, about recovery. Recovery is huge. So, you know, I've started as an IHP, I'm starting to bring in other other elements like uh, I've been do doing more hydrogen water. It, it cuts my recovery probably by, I would say, six to 12 hours. Um, so, you know, my body's done this for a long time. So it, it recognizes what needs to happen. Good sleep, good nutrition, good hydration, good yep. supplementation when it's appropriate do you have red light therapy in that would be that it's exceptional for uh the kind of injuries that you can get from yeah. uh practicing uh karate yeah like you put that on a bruise or a small fracture or whatever it really makes a big difference yeah i i do have i do have some red light but i'm gonna i'm gonna upgrade that i do have a, a sauna uh that's uh got a, a near infrared sauna so that definitely helps uh, awesome. but i'll definitely definitely take that advice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It makes it and, and get the, I mean, we work with Juve because they're, uh, they use the same red light that you see in studies, but when it comes to like healing the kinds of injuries that you tend to get from, uh, the, the, the style of training that you do like that, you know, kind of like beneath mm -hmm. the skin, you know, kind of surf, like it, it's fast. It really works exceptionally well. And the data on that goes back decades. So Ian, any, any programs of ours you don't have, I'd love to hook you up with something. You know, guys, I, I think I own most of your library, if I'm being honest. <laughs> well, cool. <laughs> awesome. Cool. I've got cardio. I've got anabolic. I've got performance. I've got 15. I've got maps 40 plus. I mean, I've got I've got a lot of them, but uh, I appreciate it, though. Yeah, we got a couple couple yeah. new ones coming I think you're going to like that are uh, up your alley. So yeah, maybe we'll send yep. you that. Yeah. Keep you posted, Ian. Good. I look, I look forward to it. What are, what are they called or have you not released them? Did we release the we, name? I mean, we we mentioned it, so we're doing a Maps 15 performance. Um, so it's going to be the oh, first. Nice. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. yeah. So if you already like Maps so 15, you format. it's got a little more functional twist to it than yep. the original one. You'll so like it. You'll like it. It's, it's going to be a banger. That sounds amazing. All right. Awesome. All right, Ian. Thanks for the update, brother. Keep it up, man. Hey, thanks, guys. Have a great day. You got it. Good work, man. Bro, those, 60, 60. Those are some of my favorite guys. So you guys know, I love martial arts, right? And I, you know, point fighting and stuff like that. I never get into because it's just whatever. Yeah. But I love, uh, Kyokushin matches and they'll go up to each other and just, I mean, it's crazy. And then you watch them, the way they kick versus Muay Thai, it's very different. And you yeah. think, Oh, one Muay Thai kicks harder. No, they're, it goes, it goes Is either it more way. Like in and out. Like, so they, they come in with a, a hard <sighs> shot and kind of come back. Karate is versus... very, like traditional karate is very powerful. Yeah. Very, very, very hard force. Right. And they also, the way that they block will hurt you. So like you hit them. Well, they block you right. It hurts you. I don't follow it, but just you uh, connecting the dots with George St. Pierre, who I watched almost all his fights, if yeah. not all his fights. I mean, he He's was special. amazing to watch. He was yeah. special, yeah. dude. And if that was his, his expertise, I mean, that's, that highlights that right there. What a yeah. badass he yeah, was. Yeah. You know? And the hand conditioning is, uh, you know, they give they give themselves micro fractures over years, <laughs> yeah. and their well, bones. Muay Thai, it's like that, but with your shins. Yeah, so. and when they when and they don't wear gloves, so so the, these karate guys, because old school martial arts, you know, it was it was you were defending yourself, and if you know boxing and you train with gloves, like you're a badass. Except you're gonna probably break your hand. Yeah, and, and then when you break your hand, you're done. Karate because of its ancient. Uh, background like they didn't wear gloves yeah, so that knuckles, you need so. to have hard hands so yeah. you don't break your hands and uh i mean you should you should look up look up pictures of these these kyokushin like senseis you'll have hands. To e the knuckles are so big you'll have to email him doug and get him to send the pictures of what his bruises so that's uh, so the yeah. boys can I'm when they when they do that. the edit they can oh bro he probably uh, looked like a sausage i don't want to i totally want to see bro <laughs> that's so wild that's cool yeah, what a badass our next caller is Kirsten from Australia. Hi, Kirsten. How can we help you? How you doing? Hello. Hi, guys. How you doing? How are you? So excited to be here. Yeah. All right. Um, yes, I've been to questions. So thanks for your time for your time to take um, to answer my question. But I found you guys in November 2022, and since been running Maps programs, so I started in January 2023 with the RGB bundle, and since then I've been running all. Also, symmetry, split, performance, and then did a bit of muscle mommy and just recently completed anabolic advanced. 
So oh. by way of background, I'm, I'm 50, just turned 50 this year. So I'm about 145 pounds at about 20, 21% body fat uh, at a height of 5'8". Um, but the thing is with my program, it seems something's off. I've been working with a general practitioner on my health. I worked on um, my gut health, a functional medical practitioner, and also just worked on various other things like sleep and um, bringing the protein up and so on and adjusting my macros. But still, I haven't seen really much muscle gain. Maybe that's just being female, the age and being an ectomorph. I don't know. But uh, I would just like to make more progress. So I'm just wondering if you had any tips on programming and what to I, I think actually to do the next. I think actually maybe going to either uh, Maps 40 plus or going to Maps 15 might be yeah. a good transition. Before right now. we go there, though, let's start. With, let's start with here. Your height, your weight, your body fat percentage. You're in a great place. You're doing really good. Yeah. If you're not seeing strength gains. Mm -hmm based off of what you told us and what you didn't tell us, I'm going to guess it has to do with your nutrition and you're not hitting protein intake is what I'm going to guess. Do you know how much your, mm -hmm. what your protein intake looks like? Do you know what, are you tracking anything like that? So I don't track every day, but I track occasionally just to dial it in. So I know how much protein or how much yogurt, for example, yogurt to put in my breakfast or how much chicken to put in my lunch and so on. Uh, so I'm aiming for one gram per pound of body weight um, and also dropped a bit of the fat and brought up the carbs. So I think get about 2,500 calories on average. Yeah. And, your, and your protein, you're hitting about 140, uh, like close to 140 grams a day? Yes, yes. Excellent. Okay, you're doing a lot of right, good stuff. I, I, I agree with Adam. Let's have you back off on the volume and see what happens. Especially, you see, she just started HRT too. So if we yeah. if we get if we got that because that could have been something too, right? If you're if you're doing all the right things, but your hormones are out of balance, that's enough to to keep. How long you have you been on HRT now? Only since May, so I only just started. I'm not sure I'm feeling a big difference, but I'm just trying to give it a go and see if that helps. Any uh, any yeah. thyroid or testosterone with that, or is it just estrogen and progesterone? It's just estradiol and progesterone, no testosterone. I did have my thyroid out, so I'm on thyroid medication anyway. Oh, you are? Okay. Because the, the two biggest body composition changing hormones yes, are thyroid. testosterone and thyroid. Yep. So, um, you know, I, and I'm sure you got your testosterone looked at, so it's probably okay, I'm assuming? It's very low. Like the DHEA is very low. Okay. <laughs> but they don't give you anything for that here. Oh, uh, yeah. So, so those are the, so thyroid and testosterone are typically the two, like those are the body composition changing hormones. If your testosterone is low and DHEA is low, it is going to make it more challenging to get, uh, to get results. Now it doesn't make it impossible. It just makes it more challenging. I don't think that that's the whole answer, but I do think that will make a difference. That being said, I'd like to see you, uh, reverse diet and back down on the volume and see how, mm -hmm. how well you do. And of all the programs that you did, you did anabolic performance, aesthetic, strong symmetry, split muscle mommy, which one of them give you the best strength gains? Which one of them made you feel like, Oh, I think I'm progressing. Um, I think initially with anabolic advanced, um, but I it tapered off after a few weeks. The first four weeks was good. And I kind of leveled out. Um, aesthetic was good, but felt too much. Strong in the end was a bit too much. I had to uh, add more rest days in between as well. Yeah. Let's let's maps fifteen. Yeah, I like volume. maps. Let's go yeah. maps fifteen advanced. Let's do let's do that. Do the advanced version of maps fifteen. We'll send that if you. And don't let's have see it. what happens. Yeah. We'll send that to you. If Is you that don't every have. day? It's a six Basically. day a week oh, no, program, but it's about 20, 25 minutes. Yeah. If you're limited on the time or days, like, so if uh, it works better for like a three day a week, you can, you can uh, stack them. You can stack the days. So you could, so it's basically six days a week, but you could do three days a week. You could put three days a week if you need to. So it's okay. The way we're, we wrote it, you could pair those up. And it's a short enough workout that you could pair it up and still be under an hour. So that's a, that's an option or, yeah. or run it the way it's laid out, which would be ideal. But I think that, uh, based off of what you're, what I'm reading, uh, the reduced volume and then, and then, and then be, uh, as, as, uh, consistent as you can with the tracking the protein. Cause sometimes that, I mean, when someone tells me that they're targeting and they check every once in a while, uh, I normally will have my client, Hey, let's for the next few weeks, let's really track every day so I can get a good 
glimpse of making sure mm. you're hitting that because with, with protein, it doesn't average out. So if you have like a great day of protein one day uh, or even over and high, and then you turn around the next day and you have say 90 grams, it's not like it's an average of the two. It's you missed that day. We're going backwards. And so if you have a day mm. or two like that every week, even though the most of the week you do really good, that's enough to potentially keep us in a plateau. So yeah. I'd, I'd want to make sure we're consistently hitting the protein. Now, that being said, uh, I want to go back to the hormones. You said that testosterone is not something – are, are the regulations where you're at in Australia, does it make it very hard to get testosterone replacement therapy? Uh, the GP normally just suggests to estradiol and progesterone. Uh, I don't know way who you would have to see to get testosterone, but it seems like uh, Longevity. not available over – you would need yeah. to find a long, yeah a longevity <laughs> clinic. They, they, um, they have them over there. They do. If yeah, you went to a longevity clinic, if your testosterone is low on the low end, um, it'll make it difficult to build. Now, reducing the volume mm -hmm. can make up for some of it, but uh, it makes mm -hmm. a big difference. Like I said, thyroid and testosterone, those are the ones that if you balance those out with replacement, then you see like big composition changes, fat loss, muscle gain, all that stuff. That all being said, also, I, I, I want you to be like, uh, your height, your weight, your body fat percentage, your age, you're doing really well. Mm -hmm. You are. You mm -hmm. are doing really well. Very well. We're mm -hmm. obviously nitpicking right now. Yeah, low 20s is great body fat percentage. <laughs> nice, uh, healthy body fat is, percentage. Yeah. Uh, another another uh, option for you to help you out on the the, the uh, potential mission to go find testosterone, uh, if you go into our free forum on, on Facebook, Mind Pump Hormones, uh, the company we work with, Transcend, they might not be able to do it for you, but they will most likely know somebody yeah. over there that they can connect you with to be able to uh, get you testosterone. Uh, and I do okay. think that that, makes, that can right. make a huge And you said reverse diet, so from 25? Yes, reverse diet would probably be good. Sorry. So from 2,500 to what kind of calories? Oh, 3,000 or 2,800? Yeah, you could go up 100 to 200. That's it. Slowly. Yeah, slowly. So, because when I tried it during split, I thought I could eat more. So, I put on 500 calories and then went straight to body fat on my belly. So, I don't, I want to avoid that to so maybe take it more slowly. Yeah, yeah, 500 is a big jump. Yeah. Yeah. 100, 200, that, that's, yeah. that's a good, like, nice reverse diet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And after MAP 15, if I was planning the whole next year, would I just keep running the same program or switch to something else? I like MAPS anabolic afterwards. And then symmetry afterwards. I wouldn't touch aesthetic, and I wouldn't touch split uh, probably ever. Uh, over forty, mass forty plus would be another good program. If if I can make a recommendation too on the way you do the reverse diet is if you eat, I'm assuming probably three times a day or so. Every meal that you eat, yeah. add two more ounces of meat to whatever you're eating. So whatever portion size you currently uh -huh. do right now. When you eat chicken, when you eat steak, when you eat fish, whatever the choices that you're choosing, add two more ounces of meat to each one of those meals. That should cover the reverse diet, and it'll also help ensure that we're hitting optimal numbers of protein. That would be an easy, good way to mm -hmm. reverse diet. Okay. And do I need to bring my steps up as well at the same time? Someone suggested I should bring my steps up as well, but I'm already at 12,000 no, a day, so it's okay. hard to you're do fine. much fine. You're, you're okay. Yep. You're okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, stay active, uh, mm. but you're okay. You're not like sedentary. If you were at like two, 3,000, I would suggest that, but 12,000 steps, you're moving good. Yeah, okay. So, okay, MAPS 15, reverse diet, check out testosterone, and be conscious about the protein So That's right. And any other... Those are macro that's it. adjustments. Those, that's it. That's it right there. Those are, those, those are the big rocks right there. Yeah, okay. I'll give that a go. We're going to send the MAPS 15 over Thanks, to you, Chris. Guys. Okay. You got it. Amazing. Okay. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah. Thank Love you. The show. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You know, ever since um, working with like Dr. Tina and Dr. Lauren, I know. you know, they really make the case for- They make a good case for it. Especially testosterone and thyroid. Both of them have said that. Like those two, it's really hard to have body composition changes when and, they're not- And at 50 years old. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we're not talking about a chemistry's a changed. Twenty year old right now. You're talking about someone who's fifty years that's old right. right now. So um I you know, that's why I went that direction right away for I hope she does that. I hope she reaches out, goes in the the forum. Pretty sure that transcend I don't know if this just transcend go to Australia. No, they don't. Not, yeah. No, not but I'm sure they know somebody because they're connected in that world who uh, does it. And I know they do it over there. Uh, they mm -hmm. do. They have longevity yeah, clinics. Yeah. So Absolutely. there's gotta be someone that will do that for this. Is yeah. the one thing that sucks about going to a GP for this type of stuff. Yeah. A general practitioner. They don't they don't they, they avoid it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well they're they're like they're looking they're they're completely uh 
medicating off the charts only mm -hmm. versus the symptoms and listening to the client tell them all these things. It's like, oh, you may, this may help, you know. Plus, testosterone has been relegated to the performance enhancement drug category. Yeah. And so they're afraid to There's prescribe. Still stigma there. Yes. I mean, the fact that they she she's on progesterone and estrogen is actually remarkable from a GP because just 10 years ago, 15 years ago, they weren't even doing that. So, All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body.